Each operation room should contain suction and, if necessary, laparoscopic equipment, diathermy equipment and an operation table. Normally, the surgeon stands on the right side, the assistant and scrub nurse on the left side. The anesthesiologist stands on the head side with his equipment. The operation table is already prepared. Spread out is an operation sheet with an underlay which can be used to tuck in the arms and transfer the patient to the hospital bed. The patient's bed is manoeuvred inside the operation room and the bed is placed parallel to the operation table. The bed rails are lowered and the bed is placed right next to the operation table to enable the patient's transfer. Then it is placed on the brakes. The sheet is removed and the patient is asked to transfer to the operation table himself. He should be in the middle of the table. To ensure this, the edges of the bed can be felt. The brakes on the patient's bed are then removed and the bed is removed from the operation room. The arm board is installed and the patient places his arms over the arm boards. To earth the diathermy, the pad is placed on a dry skin area, such as the upper leg. When prosthetic materials are present, place the pad on contralateral side or on the back of the patient. A scrubbing protocol is shown here. In the dressing rooms, one must remove jewellery and wear a surgical hairnet. First, a surgical mask is put on and both strands are tied. Then, protective glasses are put in place. The distal part of each nail is properly cleaned underneath with a small stick. Then the disposable brush is used to clean the nails of both hands and the knuckles. The hands are scrubbed for two minutes with soap. Do not forget to scrub the wrists extensively. Rinse the hands and forearms with water. Keep the hands high so the water goes from distal to proximal to ensure that the water from the unwashed arms does not contaminate the clean hands. Afterwards, the hands and forearms are dried with disposable towels. Now alcohol is applied. The first time it is applied to both the hands and forearms and it is rubbed until the skin is dry. The palms are rubbed together. Then the fingertips are rubbed in the palm of the hand for sterilizing the nails. Now the base of the thumb is rubbed thoroughly. The palms are rubbed together with the fingers interlinked. Lastly, the back of the hand is rubbed against the palm. The wrists and forearms are rubbed extensively. The second time the alcohol is only applied to the hands and is also rubbed until it is dry. Keep the hands high to maintain sterility. Grab the gown and unfold it with the interior side towards yourself. 
Don't shake the gown as dust and dirt may hover up and contaminate the gown. Put your arms in the sleeves and keep them inside until you put on your gloves. Stand in front of the circulating nurse as she ties the strings attached to the neck and waist. With the hands still in the sleeves, the gloves are taken and unpacked. Folding the lower edge of the wrapping paper prevents that the paper folds back. Pick up the right glove with the left hand at the folded border. The folded glove is turned around so that the thumb of the glove is facing downwards. The right hand takes the folded border of the glove. The left hand takes the other side and pulls it over the hand. The lower edge of the glove is pulled to proximal as the hand and fingers maneuver themselves into the glove. Pick up the left glove with the right sterile gloved hand. The right gloved hand is placed inside the folded border of the left glove. The left hand is placed inside the glove. Pull the edge of the left glove to proximal and maneuver the hand and fingers into the glove. It is helpful to pull the glove covering the fingers to distal to create space for the fingers to get in the right position. Stand in front of the circulating nurse and turn around to enable her to close the gown. Keep your hands high to maintain your sterility. These areas are sterile. 